Hi and welcome to Having a Bock Air. So we recently released our free preset called Better Bock Air and this is the first step, the most important step to getting beautiful out of focus effects in After Effects. It is of course gamma correction. In this video, we're gonna talk about seven stylistic techniques that you can use in addition to obviously correct gamma, to get the best possible bokeh or out of focus effects in After Effects. So, number one is chromatic aberration. And I'm not talking about just your generic 0.5 pixel um, separation. I'm talking about chromatic aberration that scales with the radius of your out of focus effect. Because if you have just half a pixel of RGB separation, and then you've got an out of focus effect on top of it, you're pro probably not even gonna notice it. So what I do is via expression, I tie the amount of chromatic aberration to the radius of the blur. And that way, as the radius of the blur increases, so does the chromatic aberration. But because it's out of focus, you can get away with it. And so when it's really out of focus, you have these gorgeous gradient edges, especially on areas of high contrast, even if your source image is black and white. So this is really, really beautiful and it sort of just gets more beautiful the more out of focus your effect is. Okay, number two. And we're talking about iris shape. So you might be aware in the default After Effects um, camera lens blur, you can play with the iris shape. And I think uh, off the top of my head, you can do like hexagon, octagon, blah, blah, blah. But other plugins or out of focus effects let you go even crazier than that. So I remember when Matt and I were trying to build our own bokeh effect, the first thing we did when we had the most basic version working is we added a question mark as the iris. And obviously that looks stupid, um, especially if that's really out of focus. You could even perhaps go crazier at a dick butt iris. And so if there's some really out of focus effects, you'll see a dick butt, nice Easter egg there. Um, but I'm talking about like creative aperture shapes that actually exist in the real world. And this will give you a much more interesting look than just say a circle or an ellipse. Tip number three is the fringing. And um, the fringe of the iris, I think this might only apply to certain bokeh plugins, but essentially there is a setting that will allow you to brighten up just the edges of the iris. And this adds another level of stylistic complexity and gorgeousness to the result. So when I'm using Frisch Slough's out of focus effect, I always, always, always set the uh, fringe to really bright, but really thin. So you can just see it because if it becomes too obvious, it just looks disgusting uh, and just becomes a cliche. But if you make it really subtle, it creates this beautiful extra level of complexity that makes the effect even better. Tip number four is aspect ratio. Again, not all plugins can do this, but as you know, uh, anamorphic lenses or anamorphic lens flares, those are pretty, uh, pretty in vogue at the moment. And so certain plugins and effects will allow you to do this with your bokeh. There's no real reason to be using an aspect ratio of one. I mean, come on, that's a little bit boring. So play with it. Don't go all the way, you know, don't make it completely on the X or the Y, but change it a little bit and you'll get a more interesting result. Tip number five is when you're doing transitions with bokeh, this is the way to get the most beautiful transition. So don't mix the opacities of the layer. If you've got layer A, start with no bokeh here and then ramp up to like say a thousand radius here and then cut immediately to layer B, which is also on a thousand radius and then scale that out. What that does is basically not, doesn't give you a muddy looking image because if you just do an opacity fade between two layers and then sort of, you know, blur it like that, you're just gonna get a muddy result. To make it look even more interesting, as the radius increases in your out of focus effect, increase the brightness and the contrast because as we all know, gamma and HDR values, that's what gives you the best looking bokeh. And so when these two layers meet in the middle, they'll essentially be nearly completely white because you scale up the exposure and the gamma. And that's what creates the perfect cut between two because it doesn't matter what the layer was, when they, when they transition, they're nearly completely white. 
I always add exponential uh, curves to the keyframes of the radius. So you get this really gentle start and then as it ramps up, it ramps up exponentially and then also fades out exponentially. And that will give you the best possible timing. Number six is grain order. So I'm sure you probably all know, but you've got the lens, then the aperture, and then the film itself. And because of this reason, any out of focus effects happen first and then the film grain is applied. So one thing about bokeh is because it pretty much makes everything out of focus, any texture that you had in the original image is now gone. So the perfect way to get around this is to add film grain after your bokeh because that introduces, even though you've got this beautiful out of focus effect, you've, you've lost your texture, but now you're adding in this beautiful film grain texture. If you do it the other way around and you apply your film grain before your bokeh, then A, that's physically inaccurate, and B, it looks terrible. C, every time you do that, Adobe kills an orphan. So don't do that. So lucky last, number seven. Similar to number six, this is about compositing order. So I always apply a glow before the bokeh. And glows are perfect because they basically give you these insane HDR values that look awesome when you're applying your bokeh. Um, although, if you do apply the glow beforehand, um, I mean, there are some advantages of applying the glow afterwards. So what I always do is do my normal glow, or like the big, you know, the big, the meat and potatoes glow first, then do the out of focus effect, and then add a really subtle glow on top. And the subtle glow on top, you can increase the threshold really high, so it's only sampling super HDR values. That's gonna give you these really, really, really saturated and rich colors. That's gonna give you a softness to the bokeh that you otherwise wouldn't have. Because if you, if you just have one glow, applying it before the bokeh gives you certain advantages and applying it after the bokeh gives you certain advantages. But if you, apl if you apply two, in the, in the way that I've suggested, then that gives you the best of both worlds. So that is all the tips um, I have for getting a better bokeh. I've, I've literally spent all my knowledge and have no more in, useful information to convey to you. But if you guys know uh, or have some tips for getting a better bokeh that I haven't listed, please let us know. Put them in the comments. I'm sure everyone else would like to know. Most of the, the plugins used for uh, bokeh, uh, well, all the plugins used for bokeh are by third parties. So if you have a problem with them, send them a support ticket, doesn't bother me. So yeah, go ahead, go nuts and uh, have a bokeh.